42, I show all kinds of drooping after I already had a facelift at 29. I know a facelift doesn't last forever, but... The last thing I expected was to look as if I never had one in the first place and look even worse only 13 years later. Why would my skin do this, especially at such an early age and after such a drastic procedure? Is there any way for my face to not look so long? I never had a long jaw in my younger years. Would fillers work for me, or will the weight of the fillers just cause more sagging? Am I that unfortunate that I have to get facelift number two, and I haven't even hit 45 yet? Thanks for your help. Thank you for your question. As a cosmetic oculofacial plastic surgeon for 20 years, I have done a lot of facelifts. And uh, the youngest facelift I did in my practice was 37 years old. In your question, you mentioned that you had your first facelift at the age of 29, and that now at 42, you are upset that you may need another facelift and that um, your, your jaw never looked so long. And you submitted a limited f picture of your um, face. So it's time to get maybe a little bit of perspective and have a little understanding about what, what, what your situation is. First of all, I think 29 is remarkably young to have a facelift. And I, I'm sure that your, your, your doctor felt it was necessary. And as far as the longevity question that you raised in, a, in your question, a facelift has a specific job, and that is to lift and reposition sagging tissue. When I talk to my patients about the longevity of a facelift, so many factors are taken in to how to predict the facelift life expectancy, if you will. Generally, people come to me for facelift at, no, at an age typically not younger than 50, okay? Now, there are exceptions. M one of my exceptions was a woman who was 42 years old, Irish descent, happened to have genetically some sagging at the jowl area, and she happened to have a two-year-old child. And unfortunately, she kept on being asked if she was the grandmother. So she had a limited facelift to enhance the jawline. You see, facelift covers a wide range of procedures. A facelift can be a limited mini lift where there is a small amount of skin removed and the tissue underneath called the SMAS is tightened in a limited fashion. Or it could be an extended face and neck lift where the platysmal bands are ad addressed the um, an incision is made under the chin, a larger flap is made. So there's a wide range. Now, deciding whether or not you need another facelift has to also be in the context of your goals. I wrote a book a few years ago called The Fine Art of Looking Younger. And understanding that now at, in your 40s, you are going to experience some of the genetics of facial aging. And one of the things that is very specific to the, to the 40s or the decade of the 40s is volume loss. You know, um, there is, there's a, people who used to have very round faces start to get a little bit more gaunt. And that volume loss is a part of that, that process of facial aging. Now, interestingly, some people are actually very happy about that volume loss because when they were younger, they had a lot of fat, and now they look a little bit more structured or defined. So in your situation, you have to define with your doctor what percentage of your look is related to volume loss and what percentage is, re is related to sagging. So when I look at a patient, I actually physically move the skin and tissue to get an idea of whether or not a facelift will help and what kind of facelift would help. And then we work out a plan on whether or not they're ready to do the facelift first. From my perspective, depending on the person's Per, uh, lifestyle, 
I make a decision usually to support getting the structure of the face in place before adding volumes and fillers. Unfortunately, a lot of non-surgical physicians overfill their patients because they're saying to, they're basically selling them injectables as a way to save them from a facelift. And unfortunately, when skin is very saggy and is the elasticity is stretched, it makes the skin so um, amorphous that when they put fillers, they just don't look right. They, so you can do a strategic filler but you have to do it in a limited way when someone has very sagging tissue, has a lot of sagging tissue rather. So understanding hands-on what the nature of the tissue is, and what the patient's desire is, only comes from physical exam and a consultation. So you'll get a lot of opinions about adding volume and lifting based on your photos alone, but having a consultation and finding a doctor who resonates with with your desired look and understands what it takes to get that look so you can make a a a really rational decision about the outcome so it's not just about lifting every so many years but it's rather it's about a strategy of restoring volume and the elements of facial aging a lot of which is genetic. Now, I tend to be very focused also on lifestyle and physical appearance is so reflective of what you do on the inside. So a healthy lifestyle, which means avoiding toxins such as um, cigarette smoke, excess alcohol, lack of sleep, and stress, also contribute to the overall appearance um, as you get into the middle to later decades. So meeting with a qualified specialist, having some uh, uh, looking back and reviewing your lifestyle and making adjustments appropriately are probably the next appropriate steps for you so you can get to looking your best at, the, at this stage of your life. So I hope that was helpful and thank you for your question.